Hey guys, it's Danny. So, spring is officially here. We have longer days, stronger sunshine, and together with spring, we have more orchid growth, more flowers. Some orchids just woke up from their dormancy. It's a wonderful time of the year. Well, there has to be something that spoils it. Because you see, not only orchids come alive in springtime, but spider mites as well. Now, let me get you in a little closer so you see what I mean. There we go. Do we notice anything interesting on this leaf? Yeah, it doesn't look in the best of shape. Now, never mind the pseudobulbs. This is an odontoglossum type of orchid and they do have pigmented pseudobulbs. I think Roger calls them dirty odontoglossums or they have this nickname. Anyway, let's take a look at this leaf. Do we notice something? Maybe on this one we're noticing. But since I don't have a zoom or macro lens, let me just show you the pictures that I took with my phone using flash. Now I think in these pictures you can definitely see what I'm talking about. We have some little critters on the leaves. Aren't they cute? No, they're spider mites. They're the full spider mites, the one that doesn't create a web and the one that usually damages and kills off orchids if you don't take action. Why oh why do I still have spider mite issues? Well, it's inevitable. Let's explain why. Now, if you read a little bit about spider mites, you will see that in the winter time, they don't really die off. They have a life cycle, but in winter, when temperatures are low, they go dormant. And being that my growth space is influenced by winter time, maybe the pests that I had in my greenhouse just went dormant. And so I didn't have any issues in the winter, but I'm having issues in springtime. Furthermore, these pests might have came in my greenhouse with new additions, new orchids. It's enough for five spider mice to be present on a plant to create an infestation over time. But maybe this is not how these spider mites got into my grow room. Maybe they came from outside. I have my windows permanently open now, even in the nighttime, because it is very warm outside right now. And it's also very windy. In my area, springtime is very windy. And spider mites are not pests that are exclusive to orchids or growing spaces or nurseries. They are everywhere and they feed on numerous types of plants including some roses. And no, they're not coming from my roses. My roses are clean, but downstairs I do have some roses, which every summer get spider mites. So if there's a wind that will carry a few spider mites, behold, we will have an infestation in the grow room. So at the end of the day, there is no forever gone with spider mites. Many pests will reoccur in our growing spaces simply because, well, they're everywhere. They're outside, they're on new plants. It's impossible to be spider mite free for all of our lives. And maybe for some of us, it's not gonna happen all that often, but reoccurrence and reinfections can happen. What do we do? Do we just give up orchids? No, we shall make the magical potion. <laughs> Now, if you know me, you know that I'm not a fan of pesticides. I also tried them as a last resort when I was just too fed up with spider mites and I didn't like the results. Many orchids were not affected in the sense that spider mites continued to be present in great quantities on them. So I developed a formula of the horticultural oil based on mineral oil. I went and I got myself mineral oil in the form of paraffin oil contained within a body lotion because I don't have paraffin oil freely here, at least I didn't find it, and also I don't have horticultural oils freely here. They cost a lot of money. The body lotion costs a few euros. So down below you will find the link towards my recipe and of course towards the video that prompted me to make this formula. And what do you know? It works. So today we're gonna spray this orchid with my magical formula and not only, we're gonna spray the orchids around this one as well. Although I don't see signs on them, they're the types of orchids spider mites love, Oncidiums and Phalaenopsis. A little side note here, yes, I do spray my Phalaenopsis even if they don't have spider mites because spider mites on fowls, not a good time, really, really not a good time. So let's get to work. And just because outside it's very nice, it's warm, and also I don't want to make a mess in the grow room, I will go and spray outside and I'll take you along with me.
Okay, so my orchid is actually drying out a little bit outside because it's more windy. When I'm going to bring it in, I'm going to flush the pot at the sink with clear water simply to remove a little bit of that soap, but more importantly, a little bit of that oil from the top of the medium. It's not that the quantity of oil damages the root tips, but I don't want to coat the roots with the oil, making them non-water absorbent. I have never had issues with this. Maybe the quantity is just too low to coat the velamen, but I don't want to take any risks. Anyway, let's return a little bit to our phenomenon here. Things are never a coincidence, they're actually connected. It's not a coincidence that springtime brings not only wonderful things and new growth, but also pests. And you will see this more if you look outside, maybe in your garden or just on the streets. Everything comes to life. And there's a reason for this. In the springtime, when usually most plants start to grow, they produce tender new growth full of nutritious sap. Let's take the case of orchids. Whenever we have new growth, we have what they call happy sap as well. It's just sap exuding from the pores. This means that there is a lot of pressure put by the orchid into those new structures. The orchid pumps nutrients to the new growth, be it a flower spike or actually a new pseudobulb or a new leaf. And that's pretty logical. It is the point that grows. It is the main focus of the orchid. Not surprisingly, pests will love that place as well and you'll find the most of them there congregating and just having dinner. This is because pests love that really nutritious sap as well. In the case of spider mites, well, if there is nothing else to eat, they will eat pretty much anything, except cattleyas maybe. But the new growth is the attraction. And most of the times, new growth happens in spring. We start to fertilize our orchids more in spring. The orchids start to grow better. They push more nutrients to these growths. Therefore, the pests just wake up because they know, well, through millions of years of evolution, that this is the moment when there is plenty of food to eat. Therefore, spring is not only a season to be happy that our orchids are waking up from their sleep, but we need to pay attention to pests as well. Even if we didn't necessarily purchase a new orchid, even if we are pest-free in our growing space, there is a slight chance that maybe from the outside, maybe on your clothes, you will bring in some pests. And this is the moment when we need to pay attention for them. So alrighty guys, down in the description, I'll remind you, you do have my recipe for spider mites. As a little side note, I tried it. Let me show you, let me show you really fast. Okay, I tried it on scale. This was an orchid with a little bit of scale infestation. It's a brassia. And it was especially on the flower spikes, but the new growths as well. I tried this recipe and I think it's been three weeks. This orchid is clean. There is no more scale. So maybe this recipe against spider mites can work against scale as well. Another viewer of mine told me it kind of works against mealybugs as well. So if you guys ever tried this oil recipe, on any other pests, so do let us know down below because I have to tell you guys, I've battled spider mice for three years and I was ready to just give up. I gave up, I tried pesticides, although I didn't like it and it didn't work. I was sure that will be the end of me. But no, this oily solution which eliminates spider mites through suffocation is the best thing ever because they cannot create resistance to it. And P.S. You don't need to use body oils or paraffin oils. In the USA, I think you do have horticultural oils easily available and at very good prices. You can definitely use those. Follow the instructions and see what ingredients they have. If they're mineral oil based, I think they will work pretty much the same. Mineral oil is different than your vegetable oil because it's lightweight and plants can breathe. And as you could see, I've been using it already for a year and a half. I did not have losses. The only problem I had was when I tried vegetable oil. It's a lot heavier. Mineral oil is not as heavy. I really like it. I prefer a 1% concentration, but do follow the label. Always try it out on one leaf. And there you have it. I'm so happy that I finally found a cure for spider mites, my nemesis. And if this works on other pests as well, great, let us know down below. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. <laughs> I never thought I would be just ooh, so fluffy when it came to spider mites, but it changed my life, really, that little recipe. And again, it's not the body lotion, it's the paraffin, it's the mineral oil. So be creative if you don't have horticultural oils, paraffin oil. But if you do have them, just buy those. Alrighty, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. If you hated it, give it a dislike. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. 
And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.